Don't miss this web class next week. Learn what natives do that you don't, so you get that seven or higher on IELTS on your next exam. Good morning, Aubrey. How was your weekend? It was great. It was Easter weekend here. We're a little. We're recording um, a little in advance, or a little in advance, right? So. Easter was a few weeks ago and we had a great weekend, had a little bit of family over. It was nice to see some people we've been quarantining, but we're finally able to get together a little bit, which is nice. What about you? Yeah. I, crazy family weekend as well. Birthday parties, Easter, baseball games. So busy. Like there couldn't have been more happening this weekend. <laughs> um, <laughs> but guys, we have plans to do more for you. Um, Lindsay and I are going to do a really, really cool web class at the beginning of May. And we want to encourage you IELTS students to sign up because it's not exactly for IELTS, but the, the language skills on here are so useful for IELTS, especially in the listening and the speaking. Right, Aubrey? Yeah, exactly right. It's going to be a lot about pronunciation and some of the rules that natives use, things that we change that you have to know in order to understand the listening audio on IELTS, right? If you don't understand this, you're going to misunderstand some of the passage and possibly get some of those questions wrong. We don't want that to happen. So this web class, what you're learning, and a couple of the tips we're going to give you today will help you to get those questions right on the listening exam to bump up your overall score. Exactly. So um, the sign up link for this web class, guys, allearsenglish.com slash native, um, because this web class is called three things natives do that you don't subtitle how to stop sounding like a student. So this is so useful, guys. Um, so we're going to talk about a couple pronunciation tips today. Not so much that you have to do these things, but why native weird pronunciation can get in the way of your listening skills. So we're going to give you some tips about that today. But in the web class, you will get more of these rules and examples about pronunciation. But also, guys, some really awesome natural slang and idioms that you'll never get in textbooks that you can throw in the speaking answers to really impress the examiner. So, so much stuff happening in this web class. Oh, and also like transition phrases as well for speaking. Okay, guys, so much. So much. <laughs> so yes. uh, sign up allearsenglish.com slash native and grab your spot. Um, okay, so there are features of native pronunciation called connected speech. There are actually five rules of connected speech. And in the web class, we'll focus on the three most useful for you guys, the three rules that get in the way of you understanding us on the listening exam. So let's talk about the first couple rules with some examples. So the first rule is called assimilation. Um, what does that mean? Yeah, so this means that a phoneme or a sound in a word is changed in some way. And it actually, it's it always affects a neighboring word, right? So we might drop a letter or add a letter to the next word. And this can really cause problems because you might think you heard the word wrong in the list or right in the listening packet passage. And it's just going to cause confusion and cause you to miss answer. So let's give a couple of examples. First of all, if we say in between, we change that N. We don't say in between. It becomes an M. It's like mm -hmm. in between because it's yeah. faster for us to have the M sound before the B. So natives will always say in between. Exactly. So this happens in every language, right? When we're speaking, you get sort of lazy <laughs> just for to make it efficient, right? Like it would just yes. take too long. It's too hard for our mouths, our mouths to make both sounds separately. Like we're never going to say in between the right. end is too far from the B. So we say in between, it turns into an M and that causes confusion. When these sounds change, even if you're like a high level student and you're so like the adrenaline is going on test day, you're so focused. And so you're like, I heard an M. Well, I'm supposed to write exactly what I hear. So I'm going to write an M in the answer, right? right. Um, I could see this coming up on like 
like um, map completion questions, right? Where someone's describing the blueprint for a mall or something. And they're like, the cafe is in between the blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And so the answer is supposed to be in between, but that's not what we say. So being aware of these rules is half the battle, right? If you know this happens regularly, then you're ready. You know- I'm listening for it. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. Um, so that's a great example. And then also, um, last year, mm-hmm. yeah, we're, we're lazy. We're not gonna say all those separate sounds. So it becomes last year and it becomes like a CH sound almost. And that could be really confusing. Yes, we often change T to D or T to CH. And that's exactly right, that it depends on where the sounds are in our mouth, where our mouth makes the sounds, that whatever's easiest, whatever's fastest, because we're often running words together. And so we're changing those sounds. And you do, you need to know not what you heard, not what sound did you hear to write, but what the word actually is and how it's actually spelled. So it's so important to be aware of these. Yeah. So much of, so many of these pronunciation rules, these connected speech rules, where it really messes you guys up is spelling. Like that's what it comes down to is it's gonna just wreck some of your spelling for these easy phrases on listening. Again, if you're not aware and you're like doubting yourself that like you remember how to spell these simple words, right? So the second rule that we will talk about in the web class that we'll give you a hint about today is called elision. So elision is when a sound just disappears. And this happens a lot, like when we're yes. speaking. Um, so in like a combination of two words, again, it's like it's often a, a T and a D, like these sounds change, they disappear all the time. So an example might be left behind. Now, if I'm saying that quickly, I would just say left behind. I don't even hit don't hear the T at a T. At no, right. not at all. Um, so that's confusing. Um, what are a couple other words, Aubrey, that it's just, it's so natural for natives to say these words with missing sounds and it does cause difficulty for students. What are for a couple sure. more words like that? So like think of the word camera. You would never know that it's C-A-M-E-R-A if you're trying to write it phonetically. If you're, if you're writing it how it sounds, right? You'd just write C-A-M-R-A camera because we mm-hmm. don't, you don't hear that E at all. So you have to know that it's spelled with the E or when you hear it, you would, you would skip the E because we don't say it at all. Yeah. And then the most classic word uh, that I know we've taught you guys how to say this correctly before, but... I'm telling you, like 90% of non-native speakers still say this word wrong, I feel like. So this is this is a good example of where this will help the speaking, not only the listening and spelling. Um, comfortable. <gasps> Guys, nobody says comfortable. No, right. we just, that middle syllable just disappears. We say comfortable. So guys, sign up for this web class. This is going to be hugely popular. Spots are limited, guys. So sign up right now. Grab your spot beginning of May, guys. So sign up now, allearsenglish.com slash native. Yes. All right, guys. That's going to be a fun one. It's Lindsay and Jessica. You guys are always so fun with the pre-party. So definitely, yeah, don't miss out. Sign up today. Go and sign up allyoursenglish.com slash native. All right. Awesome. Thanks for hanging out on this bonus, Aubrey. Yeah. See you later. Bye. (laughs) Bye. Bonus tip. Get a seven or higher with the All Ears English app featuring real-time transcripts and vocabulary practice that will push your score higher. Plus, fun video lessons with Lindsay, Michelle, and Jessica. Download the app today at allearsenglish.com slash app.